Hello, welcome back to our next class. Today we're looking at control structures. Uh, basically, control structures help us to control the flow of program execution as the execution moves from one statement to another statement. Now, let's check it out. Uh, before we can get to control structures, the uh, we need to understand what logical conditions are and they help us to work with the control structures. Now, uh, what you can see on the screen here, we have the first one being greater than, that is x greater than y. Uh, that is, we will be evaluating if the value x is as a value that, that is greater than y. Then we have greater than or equal to, and this is how we write it, x greater than or equal to y. We can never write it like that. If you write it like this, that's going to give you an error. So this is not the way we write it. You need to please take note of that. Then we have less than x less than. This is the less than sim symbol that is less than y. And then we do have less than or equal to. And this is how we write it. x less than equal to y. We can never write it like this. You write it like this, you're going to get an error. Now, Next, we have equal to, and equal to, this is how you write it, x equals equals y. So that translates to equal to. And lastly, we have not equal to, that is x not equal to y. This is basically the way we write it. Okay, having looked at logical conditions, we have to move on to control structures. We have three control structures applicable in literally all programming languages. That is, we have sequential, we have selection, decision, we have iteration, sometimes referred to as looping. Now, looking at sequential, basically program execution moves from one statement to the next statement. No skipping. We do not skip any statement selection or decision it's based on the outcome of condition tested now we can have different statements executed based on the outcome of the evaluation of that of the conditions uh, the next one is iteration or looping uh, basically this is where we have execution of statement or statements over a number of times until a specific condition is met now what happens when the condition is met we basically exit the loop and continue with program execution okay sequential control structure this is basically where we have uh, program execution from one statement to the next statement to the next statement and so on until we reach the end of the program that is if the program execution does not come across other control structures it will execute one statement to the very last statement now looking at if statement will specify a block of java statements or statement to be executed if a condition evaluates to true while under switch we are basically looking at we are going to apply it where we have more than one condition basically more than two conditions to be tested that's why we're going to apply the switch if statement lead to if conditional statements where we have if we have if else we have if else if if you're looking at if we are saying if we expect one outcome for a condition to be tested then we are basically going to use if if there are two different outcomes for a condition to be tested, then we're going to use if, then we test the condition. If it does not evaluate to true, then else we execute the statements that come after the else. Now, the last one, if, else, if. If we have more than two conditions to be tested. And remember, this is an equivalent of what we have just mentioned, the switch statement. Let's look at the syntax of if. Uh, what you can see is basically the if uh, syntax. Let me get a pen. And now we have if condition here. If condition. If this condition evaluates to true, then these statements will be executed. If this uh, condition does not evaluate to true, then we do not have statements to be executed. We basically exit this control structure. Now we have a flow chart here that shows us basically what we are saying. Uh, we have the condition is here. If it evaluates to true, then we have these statements being executed. If it evaluates to false, then we just end the whole thing. We exit from that control structure. 
Uh, next we have if else and this is the syntax you can see it here uh, we have if condition now if this condition will be tested if it evaluates to true we would have these statements being executed if it evaluates to false then we would have these statements being executed now we have a flowchart here that shows what we are saying so we have the condition here if it evaluates to false then these are the statements to be executed if it evaluates to true then these are the statements to be executed after either statements are executed then we exit from the control structure by ending now we have if else if now if else if it's a bit different because remember we said this one allows us to be able to execute conditions or to evaluate conditions that are more than two now we have the first condition here if it evaluates to true then we have these statements being executed if it evaluates if the second one evaluates to true then we would have these statements being executed now remember we would only get to the second condition if the first condition did not evaluate to true would get to the third condition if the second condition did not evaluate to true and then would have statements being executed on and on and on and on depending on the number of conditions that you have in your program structure now at the end if all these control of if all these conditions have been tested and they have evaluated to force then would have these statements being executed they are more like default statements now we have a flow chart here that shows us what we are saying so the first condition if it evaluates to true then certain statements will be executed and then we would end the whole thing if they evaluate to force then we move on to the next condition this could be the condition number two we would move to this condition it will be tested if it evaluates to true then statements will be executed and then we would get out of this control structure if they evaluate to force then we would have another condition being created where if tested and it evaluates to force we would have another condition being tested and so on depending on the number of controls uh, the number of conditions that you have in your program and so on basically we are saying if any of these uh, if any of these condition is tested and it evaluates to true uh, would expect certain statements to be executed after the execution of those statements we would expect the end we would expect the end of that particular okay let's write programs to demonstrate the concepts that we have just learned uh, we can come to our clips uh, our previous pro project was learn java basics uh, let me see uh, the package we were working on uh, that was com lesson one lesson dot one we can create a new package let's call it com dot lesson two okay now let's create a class inside this com this package so we need a class what do we call it uh and call it check edge yeah check edge something simple like that now there it is so we have a class called check edge and it is inside our package com.lesson.2 now remember as always as i keep on saying check name this is the name of the class and the name of the class should always match the name of the class file this is check edge.java Ah, okay now that you have done that let's start uh, we can start with the main method public static void main okay and then yeah okay we need to declare a variable we can use a variable identifier such as edge Mm, I think when we, when we declare we can also assign and we were saying 50 okay now let's get to the if statement if edge 
greater than equal to 18 remember these were the logical conditions we were looking at at the beginning of this particular topic very helpful so uh, we need to put something system dots uh, print the line print the what something like you are an um, adult yeah something simple like that okay i think that should work so this conditional statement must evaluate to true it will only evaluate to true if this condition is true edge edge is equals to 50 so i would expect this one to be true because definitely 50 is greater than same same as saying 50 greater than or equal to 18 and that is the truth so let's see let's see the kind of result that you're going to get or oh, we need to save okay there it is just giving us these outputs you can see the output there okay what if we were to change the value of edge to let's say five let me save uh-huh what do you expect uh nothing of course it's not going to output anything because after evaluating this condition it found this condition to be false and as a result of that there is it exited the control structure and there was no other statement to execute and that's why we are not getting anything if we change it back to let's say 18 Sorry, saving okay that's the truth now you need to be very careful with conditional statement because in case you had written it as edge greater than 18 then we're not going to get anything here yeah because age is greater we is not greater than 18 actually age is 18 so that's a simple example of if statement okay now that we have seen if statement let's move on to the next one mm, we can we can modify this one to fit the next example and for us to do that we need uh, once this condition evaluates to true it will execute this statement however if it it evaluates to force if we test this condition and it, it evaluates to force then we're not going to have statements to be executed and what we need to do now we need to change it to if else now do we do that we basically just come here and say else yeah yeah else else something else what maybe we can say else you are Oh, we can say a minor. Oh, you're not an adult. Yeah. So, uh, in we we have, we evaluated. We, we were able to execute this program, and uh, since we said edge is equals to eighteen, and this one says edge greater than eighteen, this one did not evaluate to true. And in our previous example, we did not get an output. So let's see if we're going to get an output right now. Need to save before we execute. Yes, there it is. Condition not true. And for that reason, we have skipped that statement and we have gone to the statement that comes just after the else keyword there. Okay, yeah, it's here. Uh, let's see if we change it again to something like eight. Oh, let's save before executing there it is if we change it to 78 let's see what we're going to get there it is because the first that is the condition has evaluated to true and that's the reason why we are getting you are an adult if we change it back to let's say we change it to seven save before executing there it has 
evaluated to false and for that reason we have executed the next statement that that's the statement that comes after else so there we go a very simple example for if statement and for if else statement now in our next video we are going to look at if else if else statement so check out the next video and we are going to demonstrate that